Hey y'all, what is up? My name is Kimberly. For those of y'all that don't know me, I'm an American that has been living off and on in Germany for the past year and a half. So I make videos about my experiences in Germany. My boyfriend is German, that's like a big credential I guess, so if you're interested in watching these types of videos, please, please, please consider subscribing to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about some things that Germans say that really confused me at first. Just when you move to a new country, people say things that are just differently phrased or different types of words that are just really confusing. Without further ado, let's get started. Number one, this is Philadelphia. Yes, by Philadelphia, I don't mean the state, I mean the cream cheese. So in Germany, when Germans are referring to cream cheese, they just call it Philadelphia. Um, and that was really confusing for me at first. When I first moved to Germany, I was invited to a dinner party and the host asked me to bring Philadelphia. And I was really confused by that because I didn't think it mattered which brand. So I went to Lidl's and I found no Philadelphia. I texted her worriedly and I was like, I cannot find any Philadelphia. She's like, no, no, off-brand cheese, off-brand Philadelphia is okay. And I was just like, huh? Off-brand Philadelphia? Um, so she meant off-brand cream cheese. So yeah, Philadelphia is used as a common saying for any type of cream cheese. We have this similarly in the US when it comes to tissues. Instead of calling it tissues, we call them Kleenex and Kleenex is a brand of tissues. We also have it with duct tape. I just recently realized this. Duct tape is a brand, it's not the type of masking tape which just blew my mind. So it's interesting what you kind of accept in your country and then you realize it's not actually the proper name for it. But yeah, so I've learned that there's all types of different kinds of Philadelphia. It's not just Philadelphia. Also, Philadelphia is an American brand. So that's one type of American spread that Germans do love and use a lot more than I think Americans use here in America. Number two is the saying fitness studio. So when I heard of people going to the fitness studio at first, I literally imagined a studio, a like ballet or dance type of studio. That's usually when studios referred to. It's a type of dance studio or even an apartment studio. Fitness studio, I've never heard that saying before. This could be different maybe in the UK. If you're British and you're watching this video, let me know in the comments down below. Do you use fitness studio? Here in America, we do not say fitness studio, but we say the gym. So I'm going to the gym and I'm gonna go work out at the gym. Here it is fitness studio. Is fitness a German word or is it an English word? I still haven't figured that out yet. Like, I don't know if it's compiled English German word. So I thought that maybe this was not even the proper way of saying gym. And Google Translate even said fitness studio when I said gym in English to German. So fitness studio is the proper way of saying it. It just kind of threw me off because when I think of a fitness studio, I think of a type of dance studio rather than a place where you go do weights or go on the treadmill. Okay, so number three, this is also something that's activity related and that is sport. So a lot of Germans will say sport when they're saying I want to go to the gym, like I'm going to go do sport or it could be, you know, going for a run um, and it kind of makes me feel good in a way because I've never been a sporty person. I've been athletic but not sporty so it makes me feel like oh I'm so sporty. But in Germany you say sport when you say I'm going to go work out. In the US we say I'm going to go work out or I'm going to the gym or I'm going for a run rather than saying sports. Sport to me is something that is usually involved in a group or when you're on a team. So if you're on a basketball team or a soccer team or a football team, whatever it is. So that's what sport is to me. Sport is not working out, but in German they say sport. So that kind of threw me off at first um, when somebody asked me if I was going to go do sport when I was clearly going to the gym. I was like, no, I cannot do sports. Um, but they meant, are you going to the gym basically? So that's a little fun fact. Also, that's a fun fact for my Germans that are interested in improving their English. I think it really shows an advanced level when you can switch those small words like sport and gym. 
Number four, and this is bitte schön. So bitte was already, bitte and schön were two words that really confused me a lot because they're thrown around everywhere and they're used for a lot of different sayings and meanings. These are two words that you really have to know how to interpret. But something that really threw me off at first when I would come to Germany is if I were to go to a restaurant or a cafe and sit down and order a plate of food and, um, you know, the food would get to me and they would say, bitte schön. Because to me, I knew bitte schön as a translation for you're welcome. So I was like, why are they saying you're welcome before thank you? So just to give y'all perspective of how I interpreted it, I'm going to do some role play for y'all. Here is your food. Enjoy. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, but it's definitely not interpreted as that. So I definitely had to learn the interpretation for it. It's more like enjoy your meal rather than a sassy you're welcome. But I really thought it was waiters being so rude to me for such a long time and it wasn't. It was just, it's the, it's the way you say enjoy your meal as well as you're welcome. Bitte schön is just very confusing for foreigners. It's really multi-useful. If you know bitte and schön, you've mastered half of the German language, am I right? So I've slowly learned the ways of Germany and to not take things so face value in sayings because when you're going between different languages, things just cannot be translated literally sometimes. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this video and if you did, please remember to like my video, it would mean a lot to me. Also, if you're German watching this video, let me know down in the comments below what are some English sayings and phrases if it was a British, Australian, or American person that has really confused you. Because I know even as a native English speaker, when I'm talking to an Irish person, an Australian person, I'm just like, whoa buddy, what are you saying there? And then Probably somebody else to pick him up. Whoever is doing it knows what he's doing. The IF. It's really interesting to hear how things can just be so different, and I bet Germans experience that even when they're talking to Austrians or people from Switzerland. All right, guys, thanks again for watching my video. I would love to see you next week, and in order to do that, remember to subscribe to my channel. See y'all next week. Ciao, tschüss, bis dann.